Hello everybody and welcome. Stevie T here. Just gonna change the camera view a little bit. Okay, so today, this week, right now, I'm going to talk about empaths. Now many of you are empathic. I think being an empath and being empathic is part of being a human being. However, some of us are more sensitive than others to other people's energy and to information. And sensitivity is a gift. Do never, never let anyone tell you that your sensitivity is your downfall. This is not so. Of course, don't, don't let me tell you what to believe. You believe what you want to believe. I'm here to say it's not your downfall. It is a superpower. I always say my sensitivity is a king superpower. And it's what, it, first of all, it, what, it is what makes me so open to receiving messages from my soul and from spirit as a whole, which are the angels guardian angels, archangels, my spirit guides, my loved ones, and other people's loved ones, all the way up to light beings that don't have bodies that are of Christ consciousness, and all my teachers, known and unknown, there's so many spirit guides and helpers and angels that we have. So anyway, uh, being empathic, I believe, is part of being a human being. A lot of people can turn it on and off very easily. Um, some people are just hardwired to not be empathic at all or sensitive to other people's needs. Some of these people are known as sociopaths and psychotics. Um, although I do... whatever. So, uh, if you're an empath or you have empathic qualities about you, I'm going to show you in this video very easy ways in which for, it is um, easy for you, an easy way that I use all the time to, number one, identify when a feeling or a thought is yours or not yours, because we are receiving information all the time and it gets into our auric body and then funnels into our physicalness and our heart and all the chakras. You don't have to know anything about chakras to understand anything in this video. Um, so we're going to identify, I'll show you how to identify whether or not it's yours or someone else's. You don't even have to know whose it is. Okay, we are all connected, interconnected through just being. And so when people think of us, when people... Uh, call us when people even me on this video when people watch this video they're sending me energy now it could be conscious or unconscious it could be that's a really super great person and it could be I don't like this video or just for example or people if you've been ill you've been in a hospital and people have prayed for you that energy went to you and helped you so we're all sending energy back and forth knowingly and unknowingly and a lot of us are very sensitive to this and I was recently inspired by a trip I took to a Whole Foods center in town. And I was talking to this to some of the cashiers and I said, you know, that has to be my next video. That must be what's really coming up for a lot of us. So I wrote some things down because my thoughts can get pretty scattered, as I'm sure you can tell. And so, okay, here is a great thing. So I'm on the section of how to tell if something that you're feeling and thinking is yours or not. First of all, I would suggest be very, do a practice, more so than not, practice makes the master, it's not about perfection, do a practice of looking and being inward more so, or as much as you can. Here you're going to really get in touch with yourself, your emotions, your thoughts, the quality of your emotions, the quality of your thoughts. And you're going to really know uh, your personality. I mean, you already do know your personality, but the more that we're going inward and we're kind of shutting out the outside world, the more we're going to experience the fullness of who we are. Peace and these feelings of tranquility. Money cannot buy these things. These things are not outside of us waiting in someone's hand as a gift to be taken and received. Peace is from within. Peace is your birthright and my birthright as a human being. Happiness is a birthright. Abundance is a birthright. We have many birthrights. Now, sometimes it feels that some people are taking our energy away from us or our power away from us because this all deals with healthy mental and emotional boundaries as well, especially when we get into the interpersonal relationships of our lives or even a relationship between you and a company. I call that a relationship as well. So how to figure out if something is yours is, is, or not, is to have a very good practice of meditation and or contemplation where you're just looking inward and being with yourself and seeing what it feels like, seeing the thoughts that you think, the ideas that you explore. 
And this will cultivate a relationship with your inner self is basically what I'm getting to. And once you know yourself on a deeper level there, I'm just hearing right now, it's actually when we're artists and dancers and singers and even cooks, that's artistic too. Remember, a lot of things are artistic, aren't your traditional arts. That's when we're really in tune with ourselves and at the rhythm and pulse of the universe. Not only when we're meditating, but when we're swimming, when we're working out, when we're doing yoga, when we're stretching, when we are doing something fun and artistic that lights us up and that's our passion, and or when we are being and spending time with ourself in solitude, the loving way in which we spend time with ourself, we are learning more with ourselves and we are getting more and more in touch with the spirit of and soul of who we really are beyond all labels and all categorizations and all of anything that anyone's ever told us that we are, should be, etc. We are at one with ourself. So know thyself is my first suggestion. And it's an ongoing process, you know, just is. Okay, so how to tell what's yours and what's not yours. I like to use the body as an example because it is something that is not without you. You're not without your body. Our bodies are a part of us and we always have our bodies. So here is something where you don't have to look outside of yourself for the answer. So everyone's body, if you would close your eyes, I liken this to being in the back seat of a car instead of, you know, uh, the front seat and the passenger or the driver, okay, having to pay attention to everything that's going by. Close your eyes, you're in the back seat of the car, your body being the vehicle. See, it's very multi-layered here. Anyway, you're inward, okay? And then I want you to take a few deep breaths, and I recommend doing five seconds in or and five seconds out at least times three, or three seconds in and three seconds out times three. If you can pick six seconds, go ahead, do that. The number doesn't matter. The repetition matters, and it matters that you're doing it at a rate that which is comfortable for you, and the point is to not pass out. So I know we all, we're all have a different capacity for breathing, but I'm here to say, Breathe fully, breathe deeply, as best you can to your ability. And so I, I was um, doing a meditation today for someone's documentary, and I caught myself saying out loud, if you can breathe, you can meditate, so no excuses, because it really is that easy. So follow your breath and get more in touch with the breath. Now, meditation doesn't have to be hard, or mindfulness doesn't have to be hard. Being with oneself doesn't have to be difficult. You follow your breath. Your breath is your connection to spirit. The air is synonymous with spirit. So do your breaths, calms your body down, gets things in this even, tranquil level. Now, yeah, you're still going to have thoughts. Let everything that you hear on the outside of you, or even within you, be a part of it. You're not concentrating on any one thing except following the rhythm of your breath five seconds in, five seconds out, three seconds in, three seconds, out, whatever you want. And so you, I would say at least three times, always, I would say to you, always challenge yourself and go further, double that, go six times. Really get to that space. And then ask yourself, and of course, never close your eyes when you're operating heavy machinery, you're driving a car, okay? Uh, ask yourself, with your eyes closed, being inward, is this thought mine? Is this feeling mine? Is it truly mine? Is this thought or feeling, feeling I'm experiencing truly mine? Now, why I'm asking that and why you should ask that of yourself, here's just one example, one way of doing this, is your body has a yes answer response in a way of your senses. And your body has a no answer and response. I'm speaking about your senses. So senses are very broad. Senses can be a knowing. They can be an actual feeling, hearing, seeing, taste. You get it. So, for example, some people, when they're yes, they feel more expanded here. Or they feel light and airy or happy. Some people's no's feel like their teeth just want to clench or they get in the belly in the solar plexus area in the belly right, right uh, between by your belly button a little bit above that it gets like this little sick to the feeling stomach or like a pole there that's fear that's a no response 
everyone's yes and no and the body is going to be completely different. So honor whatever that is. And if you want to make sure you're getting the right information, just to make to make um, to silence your mind of the doubt, then go back and ask what is body show me what a yes feels like body please show me what a no feels like or is like because we're going to concentrate on senses and not narrow it down keep it rigid and narrow you know show me what a sense it, it creates in my body and listen to that so pin down your yes and pin down your no so why am i saying this well a lot of times when we're passing through the grocery store we're collecting people's thoughts and feelings and emotions our neighbors were collecting our thoughts, feelings, and emotions. If you, live, if you live in an apartment building or you go to school, everyone around you and all the all the attached rooms and buildings, okay, you're, there's a lot of energy, there's a lot of thoughts, and a lot of emotions. And people, we all emote very powerfully. So what I'm saying is to be mindful and remember that we are like sponges and we collect those feelings and thoughts and, emo and emotions and a lot of them are not good for us. And that is why you probably come to this video. That is why sometimes you're not feeling well. And that is why sometimes you're thinking and feeling ways where just a few moments ago, you were not feeling that way whatsoever. Like I remember sitting when I was first having my awakening and living in a house with more than three people here, I was, I'd be in a really great mood. And I'm like, yes, yes, yes. And you know, where your mind goes, your life flows. So I was keeping track of positive momentum in my thoughts and feelings, and I was deciding how I wanted to feel on things, and if something came through, it was like, wah, 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 wah. but you can't do that, or a doubt or a limiting belief, I would tell my truth to it in the moment and thank it and keep going. So I was in a good space. This is just one example. And then, you know, all of a sudden, feels start to feel really compressed and constricted and then even depressed, and then even like really weird, odd thoughts coming through me. And... What I'm saying in this video is, how often do we ask ourselves, is this mine or is this someone else's body? Please show me a yes and a no. Is this, so you know what to do. I just went through it all. Okay, so once you know that it's yours, honor that, feel it to heal it. Don't act on anything that's going to hurt you or somebody else. Everything is temporary. Feelings are visitors, let them visit. Don't try to push them down. Don't try to swallow them exercise them, write them out, create art, speak to somebody you can rely on that you feel comfortable with, even if it's a health service, okay? So, yes, exercise it. Now, if it's not yours, you can have a sigh of relief and or remove yourself from that situation. You don't always have to be in the situations. If you're in a conversation with somebody out in public and you start feeling very strange, that's your body's warning sign to you of like buzzers and alarms going off, going like, get the hell out of here. This person is pulling on your energy or get the heck out of here. And this, you're soaking up this person's vibe and it, where they have been is not a good place. Where they are is not a great place. You don't want to suck that up. So what happens though, if you do have something with you or you know yourself to be sitting in an energy that is not congruent with your own energy and you know it's not yours and you just or you just simply desire not to feel that way well here's what i do i cleanse it so i say okay and i acknowledge the feeling or the thought and then i say i release this into peace this is not mine i release all that which is not mine all that which is not rightfully mine variations of these things that's why i'm spewing them out I, anything that's rightfully not mine for my highest and greatest good leaves me now and goes to God. Or if you're not into God, you could say, leaves me now and goes back into the universe and gets transmuted by pure positive energy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And you just know it to be done and move on. Now, if you're in a situation where someone's being psychologically or physically or emotionally abusive, then remove yourself from that situation because it's going to continue, excuse me, it's going to continue happening. So be mindful. But the everyday, moment-to-moment -moment stuff that isn't as extreme as that, you're just going to bless it and move on from, from it. Um, take a shower. That's a really great way to clear the energy around your body. And imagine that it's white light or gold light or purple rain, whatever you want. Okay, it's running down your body and it's going down the drain, never to return again. And to be cleansed, and, and so intent, to be cleansed 
on its way to wherever it's going next for the highest and greatest good. And it's gone. It's yours. It's not yours anymore. So whether that's in a bath with some rock salt or um, Epsom salt or just a bath, okay, and or a shower, that's awesome. Other thing you can do is just with intention, say I release into peace. This is not mine, thank God, so it is. Move along. And then I, right after that, I would put a layer of protection over myself. So I remind myself or and or intend that I am protected and I put a white light around me. Um, I put a violet light around me, a gold light, whatever light I want to. Um, I'd all, you can protect yourself with prayer. You can say something to the effect of, Thank you for protecting me in all ways, mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. I know I am whole, healed, and complete, and all is well. I am pure and cleansed all day, every day. So it is. Something to that effect. Make it up. It's all about intention here. Okay, so you protect yourself, put light around yourself, do a prayer, forgive yourself if you know that it was you doing it to yourself. Forgive others if you know exactly where it came from, okay? If we just broke up with somebody and they're really pissed off, if we just cut somebody off um, in traffic by accident and you can feel their anger towards you, forgive them, okay? Forgive yourself for cutting them off. No one's perfect here. We're all learning, okay? So just take the information that which you're given and learn from it, okay? Um, also, learn the rules or observe the rules of non-engagement. So when you know that that telephone's ringing and it's going to be Susie Q, and Susie Q always is dumping her negativity on you, and you know what kind of conversation it's going to be like, you have to ask yourself, do I wish to continue with having this telephone conversation or being her friend, period, and being there for her, period? Because at that point, it's about healthy mental and emotional boundaries. It's about, with love, drawing the line, okay? No is a whole and complete sentence. Unless your heart is telling you, you all actually do not owe anyone explanation for anything. So, uh, do let people know how you feel. I was in public the other day. This woman was really close to me. She was telling me good stuff. She didn't mean me any harm. I could feel a lot of hurt. I'll call it icky energy from something she had been through. Going and she, without, I don't really believe in this case that she was intentionally trying to plug into me, but some people will, it's called psychic vampirism sometimes, people will plug into you to siphon energy away from you, for them. Those usually are people that are going through something and they're just not in their right mind, like grief, or, um, but there's no excuses because it's either power, some, a lot of people are either power over others or service to others. I'm on the path of service to others. Some people, though, only operate in power over others because they don't think they have their own power. If you are ever feeling like you don't have the power that which is yours, because oftentimes we give it piece by piece, give it away piece by piece, or by whole, and just hand things over, you can reclaim your power at any time with your intentions. You can say, thank you, God, Archangel Michael, somebody that you know who has passed away, anybody. Say, thank you, thank you, thank you for... I now reclaim any and all power that is rightfully mine from wherever it is to come to back to me whole, healed, and complete and enter into my body. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Done. So that's just one way. You can also do prayer about it. Okay, so you don't have to sit with other people's energy and sometimes they're plugging into you to siphon off your energy. And that's why you might feel um, at times no fear here. I'm just saying you might find yourself being feeling sluggish, getting ill, Remind yourself who you're hanging out with, too. So observe the rule of non-engagement. Just don't engage, and you'll skip a whole lot of that stuff. But, you know, that does not mean don't go in public and hide in that, your house, more so than not. Learn how to be around people. A lot of people have social anxiety, and for good reason. I'm one of them. However, I am also a very personable person. What I do for a living requires me to talk to, okay? So yes, it happens in person and it happens distance because there is no time and space in reality. So people's intentions and thoughts are enough. So um, live your fullest life, your happiest life, your most joyous life, follow your passion, don't let anyone stop you, be nice, yet firm, 
do no harm but take no shit, and have healthy mental emotional boundaries. And learn how to say no more often. But don't be a recluse and have isolation become your life because you're only really cutting yourself off from the happiness that which you could be experiencing. So I throw that out there because I'm feeling that that needs to be said to someone here. No judgment, no blame, and no shame. Okay, because we've all been there. All right, so got to the boundaries and forgiveness. Well, there you go. So that's a really quick rundown. Is it mine? Is it not mine? The body has a yes or a no. Tell it where to go. Bless it. Protect yourself with some energy. Go do something different. Go for a run. Go for a walk. Take a shower. Do something nurturing and loving towards yourself. Forgive yourself and all others involved. Always observe the rule of non-engagement. What we put our attention to grows and expands because we are focusing on it, because we are energy itself, giving energy and life to other energies. We are bumping around with all kinds of characters, all kinds of scenes, all kinds of situations and places. Let's be mindful and heartful of where we're going and why. Everything always starts with intention. So you can intend your way through everything. Intention is very powerful. And I'll leave you with that. Thank you very much. If you would like a reading with me, personal reading, go down here. Go to stevetrmt.com in the description below. And you can set up a reading with me and or we can have Skype, which is remote and or in person if you're in my city. And I leave you with that. Oh, okay. Actually, Spirit wants me to do one more thing really quickly. So I was... And thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for hitting the like button if you like this video. And thank you for subscribing if you're new to this channel. Today I was asked by my good friend at VintageLearners.com. She's doing a documentary on for inner city kids or urban youth uh, finding peace through all the world's religions and how we're really all the same. She gave me this book, The Life of Pi. And she asked for me to do a peace meditation, which I will also be doing a peace meditation for all of you. And um, she had me read this passage in this book, and then Spirit thinks I should read it. And I feel good about that, and I agree. So let me get there to page 49. So, The Life of Pi. Okay, and so the quote I had to read today, I didn't have to, I chose to, is this. When she first heard of Hare Krishna's, she didn't hear right. She heard hairless Christians. And that is what they were to her for many years. When I corrected her, I told her that, in fact, she was not so wrong that Hindus, in their capacity for love, are indeed hairless Christians, just, a, just as Muslims, in the way they see God in everything, are bearded, bearded Hindus, and Christians, in their devotion to God, are hat-wearing Muslims. So, uh, a funny way of saying, we are all the same, uh, all is love, all is well. Uh, a novel, that's the author, this is the book. I started to resonate with this very powerfully because she was telling me the backstory of it without giving a lot of way, and she was telling me that he spends a lot of time in the ocean, and I can relate because I always felt like I was spending a lot of time in the ocean. A lot of time alone in the waves in my life uh, it's like a metaphor and that's what goes goes back to my poetry that I'm publishing I'm going to be publishing and um, it's called the darkest ocean where I felt all alone um, in the most beautiful place but no one to share it with and then I had to realize everything was inside of me and I was not alone whatsoever I digress have a wonderful week and and a week ahead and I will see you next time. Bye.